I'm from Senegal. There's so many amazing things that I see in my country that I know people here would appreciate. So it's kind of just bringing a little bit of home back here where I grew up. Um, so I can provide people kind of just that insight, that sneak peek into what Senegal has to offer. So mm. it's really like I have this this really strong passion for helping people, helping women and children, especially. And this is one of the ways that I can accomplish that because accomplish the that. products that I'm making are being made by women in Senegal and it's a source of income for them. So I kind of feel like I'm hitting you know, killing two birds with one stone wow. by jumping into this business venture that I've always been interested in, wow. but also helping people back home. So Royal greetings, kings and queens. It is always a great day here at Refuge and Fortress. My name is Emmanuel O, and I am your host for today. I also have with me my co-host. A king. Royal greetings, everyone. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. So I have a very special guest today with me on today's episode of Faithful and Fearless Leaders, a segment of Refuge and Fortress where we highlight diverse people from all backgrounds who are making massive impact in their industry. And, you know, at one point or the other, they've had to be fearless and take several leaps of faith and make bold moves in their journey thus far. And so we want to bring them on here to celebrate their success, right? It's not easy to do what they do. And we want to congratulate them for the bold steps that they've taken and hopefully use their story as a source of inspiration for others, right? So, my guest today, oh man, my guest today is a wonderful person. I've known her for a very, very long time. We actually went to college together. We've known each other over five, maybe six years now. Um, she goes by the name of Isatu, and uh, she also goes by Ada. Uh, she's a daughter, she's a sister, she's a wife, a mentor to very important people in her life. Professionally, Miss Isitu is actually a business program manager at Microsoft. Ooh. All right. <laughs> at Microsoft for that matter. Hey, talk about it. Talk about it, right? In her in her spare time, she runs a blog about women empowerment. She's a co-host of her own podcast called Joko, right? A podcast based on Senegalese American experiences. She attends um, law school part-time at, right? At Emory Law. And it's not easy to do what she does. A program manager at Microsoft, a lawyer, trying to be a lawyer at least, you know, and then, <laughs> and then, and then she has a business. You know, she just had two pop-ups in ATL uh, this summer and they were hits back to back. Hits back to back. It's not easy, dear Miss Ada. It is not easy. It is not easy. We congratulate you. We congratulate you for what you do. So please take it off. Um, tell us what you uh, what you do. First of all, tell us who you are, and tell us what exactly it is that you do. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a very <laughs> warm intro. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. I'm, I'm super excited to be a part yeah, of this welcome. journey with you all. You um, so like you said in the intro, I am just, I say I am just a normal person trying to find my role, my niche in the world. And so I'm just relentless in that journey, trying to always find the next best thing that's going to keep me excited, keep me mm. motivated, and keep mm. me having an impact. So all wow. the things that you said are just me on my own personal journey. Yes. Um, so I'm just going to keep going. Hey, and that's what we ask for, right? Somebody who wants to make an impact. We are not, you know, we didn't come to this earth to just be. There's a reason for being here. And we see you, girl. We see everything you've been doing. And we just want to say, man, congratulations again. Again, listen, I know that this is just the beginning and you're going places. Like, I can't even imagine, right, where you're like, you're going places places you know <laughs> that most people probably just dream about right and so i just want to use your story today to be uh like an inspiration for you know most young girls out there who think they can't do this right who think uh just going to school is enough right i just want to get my uh my education and that'd be it and i'm good right or maybe even older women right uh, uh, a woman who maybe forgot herself who she was and felt like, you know, since she started having kids or since she got married 
everything was over for her and she can't do this and she can't do that. And then we have somebody like you who is not only in law school, you're, <laughs> you're a business program manager at Microsoft. You're a business owner. Um, can you talk about uh, that, that, um, that pop-up um, that you had in ATL? How yes. was that? How did you come about that? When did you get started and why this specific um, industry or this journey, right? Yeah. So I actually want to take it back a little bit because yes, please. I, I, when people kind of see like my bio, when you saw it, you probably thought, wow, you know, all these things, all these accomplishments, but it took a while to get there and there's still so mm. much work to be done because mm. I'm the kind of person where... I came out of college thinking I had to have it all figured out because for me, if you graduate with a bachelor's degree, the next thing that you have to do is get that full-time job and then work that full-time job. So my job right out of college, um, I worked for General Electric. And if you asked me six years ago, I probably would have thought that I was going to be a lifer at GE, mm. that I was always mm. going to be there because the the recipe was that you start entry level and you work your way up all the way to C-suite. And it, it didn't, it was not, that was not my experience because as I went from role to role, from city to city, I realized that I didn't find what I wanted to do in mm. that five years that I spent with GE. And now being at Microsoft, I'm having a similar journey where I'm questioning all the time, mm. am I happy with what I'm doing? Do I feel mm. like I've reached kind of the summit of everything that I've wanted to do? And the answer is always no. Mm. So I guess, um, to answer your question, the small business is one of the many ventures that I've started to mm. try to find my my purpose mm. because I didn't want it to just be like, oh, I have a full time job and that is the definition of who I am as a person. I want to mm. make sure that I'm I'm tapping into other you know skills that I have, other passions that I have, yes. and that's what led to this you know small business idea where. I'm from Senegal. There's so many amazing things that I see in my country that I know people here would appreciate. So it's kind of just bringing a little bit of home back here where I grew up um, so I can provide people kind of just that insight, that sneak peek into what Senegal has to offer. So mm. it's really like I have this, this really strong passion for helping people, helping women and children, especially and this is one of the ways that I can accomplish that because accomplish the that. products that I'm making are being made by women in Senegal and it's a source of income for them. So I kind of feel like I'm hitting, you know, killing two birds with one stone wow. by tapping into this business venture that I've always been interested in, wow. but also helping people back home. So I want to I want to <laughs> button all that up by saying that it's never like this straight shot. I know what I want to do all the time and I I'll always know how to get it done. It's kind of like this trial and error of, of a coming to experience where you want to feed your soul, hmm. uh, reach your full potential, but also, you know, obviously drive impact while you're doing it. Wow. 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 Thank you so much for saying that. <laughs> I mean, a lot of um, points from everything you just said. Right. So, number one, you're always asking questions. Right. Yes. Am I doing exactly what I want to do? Is this really what I really want to do with my life? You know, am I really happy here? So you're you're never settling, right? You're always asking that question. Are we fulfilled? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you're looking in the mirror and you're talking to that girl that you see, that person that you see in the mirror and you're saying, hey, man, good morning. How are you? Are we fulfilled today? Are we yep. good? You know, <laughs> just taking that inventory. And that's so beautiful. And I like another thing that you said, right? Like it, it, you don't have to have it all figured out right yeah. now. It's a journey. It's a journey. Life is a journey. So you're figuring it out as you go, right? And then we understand something here. And, and you, you you said a lot of stuff that's like kingdom, kingdom language, right? <laughs> <laughs> kingdom language, right? About kingdom fulfillment, right? So it's about being all that you've been created to be and more, right? It's about mm -hmm. being whatever God has put inside of you and letting that come out to be a blessing to your generation. One thing we know about God and about being a kingdom person is you're never gifted for yourself. It's always about how can you use your gift, your talent, your money, your time, your effort, your knowledge, your education, everything that you have. How can you use that to be a blessing to others? And so the moment you start asking that question, 
you're thinking in the right place because now what happens is resources starts to open up for you because God can trust you with what he's giving you so that you can be a blessing to somebody else. And then finally, you said something that is so beautiful, right? So I, I actually, um, by, by the way, I'm so sorry. My <laughs> wife didn't, um, uh, she didn't order yet. So that's, that's on me. All right. <laughs> We're gonna, after we get up this, uh, <laughs> this interview, I'm going to, I'm going to go on the computer. I'm going to tell her, listen, I need you to order it as much as you possibly can. Right. <laughs> but because here's the thing, looking from the outside, you're thinking to yourself, well, you know, she brought this product from Africa or whatever. And, and, you know, she's using it to make profit and she's trying to start a business and she's doing all these things that you would regular, uh, normally start a business for. Right. Mm -hmm. But then you're saying, actually, you know, this products are being made by women in, 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 in Senegal and, you're actually sending that money, the proceed back to them. So it's, it's like a way of, um, you know, um, contributing your, your, your quota, right? Where you're saying that, listen, I can't change this country overnight, but in my whole, in my small way, in, in any mm -hmm. small way that I possibly can, this is what I can do. Right. So it's about controlling what you can control and letting God control what the things that you cannot control. I mean, this is beautiful. Absolutely. This is beautiful. Absolutely. This now, is beautiful. I do want to make a point of clarification because yes, one thing that I've learned in my journey is just honesty, honesty with yourself, honesty with others. And so I wanted to make sure that there was no misconstrued uh, information on this. The products that I'm selling, I'm buying from women in Senegal um, hmm. at the full price that they're selling. And so, you know, when you have a business, you typically try wholesale. To, yeah, you try, you try to get things for wholesale. But by buying it at the full price that they're selling it at, they're getting their full margin. Like whatever price they're putting on it, that's what I'm buying it for. And then when I bring it over here, then I have my own business where I try to, you know, make my own profit or, or you know, break even. But definitely trying to give them all the, um, yes. you know, all, all the, all the um, what's the word I'm looking for? The, I, I'm, I'm losing the word here, but all the props. <laughs> Yeah, they're the one doing all the work and I yes. always have my pop up. So like, oh, mm -hmm. did you make these? It would be so easy to just say, Yeah, I made them because who's gonna check me? But right. I didn't make them, so I always say, you know, the women, I'm making them and I procure it from them. Oh man, that is so beautiful. I mean, even that alone, using that alone is is it, it'll get your clients, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, we're 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 using products that women and, and girls in Africa are making and we're reselling them for profit, but really we're using this opportunity to give them jobs and create yeah. an opportunity for them back home so that okay. their economy is not based on uh, their country's economy mm -hmm. they're actually making money in this economy so that's beautiful yeah. that's good so i <laughs> actually want to say this if anyone is listening right now and, and and we know you're gonna listen right so if you're from from africa if you're from anywhere if you're an immigrant here in america find a way to be a blessing back home i know a lot of us are and i know a lot of people send money back home and everything like that mm -hmm. but it goes back to your blog right women empowerment Giving them money is not necessarily empowerment as opposed to if you give them, if you show them how to make money, if mm -hmm. you empower them to make their own money, that's real empowerment, right? So great job, great job, great job on that. All right, before we move on to the next question, we got a game, we got to play. Mama, are you ready? Okay, so, I'm ready. Let's do this, let's do this. All right, uh, let me see here. Your name starts with... Uh, a right so what we're gonna do here i'm gonna do a countdown all right i'm gonna do a countdown okay hold on one second <laughs> are you ready for this <laughs> i'm gonna do a countdown and we're going to hold on we're gonna go into all right so i need you to give me i need you to give me in 10 seconds all right in 10 seconds okay three names Three names that starts with the letter A in 10 seconds. Let's go. Okay. Abdullah. That's my dad's name. Okay. Um, Allison. Uh, done. <laughs> that was in 10 seconds. What? That was 10 seconds. <laughs> that was definitely 10 seconds. <laughs> I, okay. I, I don't have my time right now. <laughs> <laughs> you took okay. your time. All right, so you gave us Abdullah and you gave us Alex, you said? 
Allison. Allison, perfect. Okay, <laughs> and, and it's good. I'm, I appreciate the fact that you didn't mention your name because that would have been too easy for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. All right. So the next question I want to ask you is this: um, Was there something or someone right that triggered the fearless? and faithful right because you had to be be full of faith right you had to believe in yourself Mm -hmm. you had to have faith that whatever i'm doing is going to work i mean even going to college right i'm going to college i'm gonna study i'm gonna graduate and hopefully right that's the part where you have that faith Mm -hmm. hopefully i get a job hopefully i i graduate hopefully something right so um was there someone or something that triggered that move for you So, um, one of the logical answers that I could give is like my mom, just seeing her, um, and how she brought us up and how she kind of came to the U S and yada, yada, yada. Right. I could say Mm -hmm. that, but Mm -hmm. I'm being truly honest. It's the fact that I saw a lot of the restrictions on women back home. Mm. And even women here in the U.S. who are Senegalese American, all the restrictions, all the limitations that we have, Mm. or at least the societal expectations, um, and kind of how that puts us within certain boundaries that we're able and not able to do, Mm. that motivated me to not fall into that mode. So when I thought about graduating high school, yeah. I could have gone to UC, which was 15 minutes from my house and still mm-hmm. lived at home. But I was like, no, I want to go away to school. And that wasn't a welcomed idea because as a woman, like right. where are you going? You're going to stay here until you get married. But right. I wanted to challenge that status quo in our society because, mm-hmm. you know, in, in Senegalese society, because there's always just this fear that as women, you have to be held really close to home so you can be protected. But I believe that you can still go away, live far from your parents and still be successful. Like all the worries that they have of you falling into the wrong hands or going down the wrong path, you can challenge that. So I guess for me, it was always thinking about all the things that we're not allowed to do. How can I challenge that in a positive way so that future generations don't have to have the same limitations? Powerful 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 this is something that can keep you going right and 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 i i always say this all the time right it's very important for you to um know your why know why you're doing everything Mm -hmm. you're doing no matter what it is right and i love the and 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 then the reason the reason why this is beautiful in your case is because whenever i talk to people right and i'm like well you need to know your why what is your why Mm-hmm. It's so that's easy for them to easy. say, you said what? Because that's what actually gets you going, you know? Right. That's what gets you going and that's what keeps you going. But the thing that I actually wanted to point out is that it's easy for most people to say, well, I want to, I'm doing this because of my kids. I'm doing this because of my spouse. I'm doing this because of my, my, my something, my mm-hmm. this, my that. In your case, you're like, I'm doing this because of their, you know, it's something from the outside that is causing that trigger. It's like, I don't want this to keep going on because of Mm -hmm. this person, not even because of me right now, right? Because you're you're married. I know that, but you Mm -hmm. don't have kids yet. So Mm -hmm. your push is not the kids. Your push is not the husband, but your push is to see a difference and to make a difference in your word. Whether or not, it, you know, it, 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 your kids is not what's pushing you. So, yep. and I'm not saying that's a bad why. I'm not saying that's not enough to, to feel and to keep you going. Uh, if you have family and stuff like that, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's a, a different level when what's pushing you, what wakes you up every day, what makes you do what you do every day is somebody else that is not even related to you. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's, it's different. It's, it's different. It's just different. It's different. I mean, it's, it's seeing that. Um, you could play a role in, in changing something mm. and taking action upon that. Like I always cringe when I see the way women are treated in our society sometimes. And I'm happy to see that it's changing in the right direction. Um, but, you know, I did grow up seeing some things that made me kind of scratch my head. Like, why are women treated like that? Or why mm. are they not allowed to do certain things? And it never was from a point of like, I want to be equal to men. So yeah. in Senegal, if you say you're a feminist, that's like a 
a like a taboo, girl. right? <laughs> this is like, why would you want to be a feminist? Um, or that you should stay in your place. And mm. then the religious influence also comes in because Absolutely. you know, there's always like, well, men are superior to women. But it's never even like that for me. I think it's just about treating people like human beings mm-hmm. and not taking away choice. Like mm. when someone is not able to do something because someone is telling them no, mm. that's very different than them knowing themselves what their limitations are. Because mm. giving someone free power or a free reign to do anything they want, that's really when you get to know them as a person because that's how you can, you know, kind of judge their character. Right. I saw a post yesterday that said that um, shopping carts are the ultimate test of like good or e- like good or bad mm-hmm. because no one's gonna. You, you're not going to get arrested for not, not hold you to it, right? Car, right. Uh-huh. But those that do go out of their way to return it, like that's just them being genuinely just decent human beings right. by taking care of something that, you know, if they don't do it, someone else would have to come do it. But at the end of the day, that's just kind of a, a good gesture. And I think that was a good example of like when we think about gender norms and, and at least in Senegalese society, which is what I have experience with. Mm-hmm. Um, when you let people make their own choices, you'll be pleasantly surprised most of the time. And I don't think we always get that because we're always being told no. And that's Mm. what makes me upset and what fuels me. Hey, hey, listen, that's that, that's what keeps you. Who are you when no one is looking, right? So yep. that's so beautiful. Thank you and for that's sharing that. And not to say that. that you can't make mistakes. <laughs> I think that whenever I'm talking, and yeah. I have to check myself on this a lot because I felt like I was this person everyone was looking because i say i'm a feminist or because i say i'm going to be one of the first to do something yeah. and it's never like a, a point of pride like oh i want to be the first to do it but because i've seen it not being done, done. Exactly. it makes me want to kind of challenge that right um in doing that sometimes you feel like you have to be perfect hmm. and i have to check myself like it's okay if you make mistakes it's okay if hmm. you don't get it right because hmm you don't necessarily have it all figured out and you may not Mm. have a prototype that you can follow. So Mm. it's fine as a leader too, to make mistakes, to make mistakes. Right. And it's, it's, it's fine for you to leave room for that. It's fine for you to find space in your mind to be okay with that. Because I actually know a lot of people that what you just said stops them in their tracks. Mm -hmm. They're great leaders. They have great ideas, but there is such um, perfectionist. It's got to yep. be done right and it's got to be done the right way that they get into this something called uh, analysis paralysis mm-hmm. to the point where they actually never do anything, right? Yep. Or they're thinking too much about what others are saying and that just stops them in their track. So, oh man, beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing yeah. that. No problem. Thank you so much. Um, so, the, the, the next question is uh what are some of the obstacles or challenges along the way that you had to overcome and how did you overcome them um i would say a consistent obstacle is just finding that balance between like selfishness and selflessness Mm. um you want to obviously do the right things and always kind of have that uh, exemplary attitude. Um, mm. But it's hard, like I said, when when you don't know what you're doing 100% or you want to give yourself some room to make mistakes. So yeah. a, a constant obstacle is just tiptoeing the line between, okay, this is how far I want to get personally But then here are some people that are important to me and I I have to take into account how they may feel about that. Um, Mm. I remember when at some point I had a YouTube channel and Mm -hmm. I was very passionate about the topics I was speaking on. And I was speaking in Wolof because I was my target was Senegalese people. Right. I wanted to reach with these topics. So I was talking about things like um, like uh, sexual health, Mm. um, sisterhood you know toxic masculinity different topics yeah and i remember i got a call from a a family member and it was like you should stop doing that show because as an unmarried woman like there are certain topics you shouldn't be talking about and the topic they were talking about was sexual health (laughs) that was a huge challenge just to give an example where i had to ask myself like is it worth it for me to keep going right and and kind of step on some toes or should i pull back and at that time i made the decision to stop because it was just too much noise like they Mm -hmm. were starting to call other family members and talk about it and i was like you know what 
at some point, God willing, I'm going to be married. So I can always come back. If this is your excuse today, I can always what you going to say now? And finish what I need to do, you know? But, and that was an example of, of something that happens quite often when you're doing things that aren't necessarily normal for a woman or as someone who is coming from a different background. Yeah. Um, you have to balance different priorities and different expectations from, from different people. So... Um, that would be one example. And I would say another one is just, um, believing in myself. Yeah. And with that, it's just, I, I'm always into something like mm-hmm. <laughs> if I'm not having a YouTube channel, <laughs> I'm trying to podcast. If I'm not doing that, I'm doing something else. And for a long time, I felt bad about that. I was like, well, am I like, I, like, I'm not cloud chasing. Like a, like a over, overachiever. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm not trying to solve world hunger overnight, but I do enjoy these things. So I have Absolutely. to give myself permission to do the mm. things that I enjoy, no matter what they look like from an outside perspective. Mm, I think wow. when, we, when we think about what other people are perceiving or, or thinking about what we're doing, we can we tend to censor ourselves. And so I've gotten to the point now where I'm very comfortable with the things that I like to do. And if something else does come up, I'm still going to pursue that. It's like, hey. I, have okay with, I have to be okay with that. Hey. <laughs> Fearless. <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy. It's, not. it's really not. It's really not. And, and I like the part that you said, <laughs> like the part that you Fearless. said, of, uh, to, to you, in life, one thing that I've understood is you, to get through any obstacle, any challenge, uh, you, you, you have to believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. You have to know the why. Yes, sir. In, in whatever you're doing. that Because mm-hmm. like I said earlier on, that's the only way you can get through all this negativities, all these things that seems to come to you along the way you know mm-hmm. i we, we really applaud you and we really appreciate yes. you. oh thank you absolutely so you said that the first thing you did was you just believed in yourself right so that's how you overcame those uh, some of those challenges right yeah, you, you, you have believed to, yeah. in yourself and you just said to yourself listen i'm gonna do what i like to do it really doesn't matter how you feel about it i'll do what i need to do to <laughs> to, mm-hmm. to be fulfilled right because yeah. re- regardless you're doing, and this is the funny thing, right? The people that are advising and saying, and, and the naysayers, right? They have things that they're doing to be fulfilled. Mm-hmm. And they are so quick to look at somebody else who's doing something and say, well, you yeah. shouldn't do that, right? Yep. Um, I, 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 I'll share a story real quick along that line. Um, we did too, at some point, right? We had a a youtube channel and Mm -hmm. uh this was like back in i don't know 2015 or 16 i don't know we did have to stop too right because why we were getting calls from family members back home saying you guys are exposing too much of yourself Mm. right that Mm -hmm. um you shouldn't be talking about this you shouldn't be talking about that um why are you showing your home people you know people Somebody said this to me. People don't have half the things you guys have. You shouldn't show that to people. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what? Mm-hmm. What? I'm trying to, <laughs> you know, it, it was so crazy. And the, it was a lot of back and forth and stuff like that. But and, and, and at the time, I made the decision to say, you know what? I'm not going to listen to whatever you're saying. Mm-hmm. I'm still going to do it, blah, 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 blah. But really, every time I stood in front of a camera, I thought about it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like it came back to my mind and I was like, you know what? Just just cut. Like, the, the, just cut it. And then eventually, it was just killing my spirit that the enthusiasm that I have going into to stand in front of the camera wasn't there anymore. And when that was in there, I just, you know, put the camera to the side and I, I just said, you know what? Forget about it, mm-hmm. you know? But then as you begin to grow, as you begin to evolve, as you begin to realize and learn more about yourself, as you, like you said, begin to believe more in yourself, mm-hmm. man, your belief system can be broken. Yeah. Like you, at this, now anybody can come to me and say whatever they want to say. It's not going to change anything. It doesn't for matter me. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It really doesn't matter. Two things, like three things, actually. Three things that, 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 that they just did it for me. Number one, if God says yes, I'm good. 
Mm-hmm. Number two, if my family, when I say family, I'm talking about my my wife and my kids now, right? Because I got to, my oldest, she, she just turned three, but I still got to ask her, baby, are you okay with this? <laughs> Should we do those things? <laughs> you know, if my wife and my kids are not okay with it, you know, if they're okay with it, rather, we're doing it. And finally, if I look at myself in the mirror and I say, hey, man, listen, this is just you and me now. This is There's nobody else here. This is just us, mm-hmm. man and man. Are we doing this? And if I say yes to me, if I say yes to me, <laughs> if I say yes to me, <laughs> it's over. <laughs> you know? So yeah, believing in yourself is such a big one. Just identify yourself, know your identity, uh, and just believe, 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 man. That's great. All right, so let's do this. Next game, next game, next game. Are you ready? Because we're not going to have that much time. Ten seconds, all right? I need you to give me three names. Three, three. Um, all right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm setting my timer right now. Ten seconds, I need okay? I setting my timer. <laughs> right, do the same thing. <laughs> all right, so this is what I need, right? So we're going for Ada, right? Because so, that's the shorter uh, name. So we're going to go for Ada. Oh God! We did the A? <laughs> what I need you to do for me is this: name three places, three places that start with the letter I. Go with the letter I. It, yes. Istanbul. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh God. Um, wow. I. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I am blanking. Come on. Right now. We got India, we got uh, Indiana, we got Italy, okay, so Indonesia. This is this is uh, this is a good example of why you gotta ask clarifying questions. Because immediately, as soon as you said go, you know what I thought about? I said country, city, or what? Like, oh my goodness! <laughs> oh my don't, goodness! Don't overthink it. I definitely overthought it, and that's another thing I always do. So oh my I literally stared at the eye of my own name, and I was like. Oh <laughs> all right so all right so that was good hey you're not you're not doing really well with the games now what's going on I'm man come on all. Let's... <laughs> all right so uh the next question we want to ask is this all right we're coming to an end now right so um to a close of the episode rather um who are your top three role models or influence who, who are the top three people you look up to or that influence your your life your decisions the things you do how you think how you move and the things you want to do with 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 your life okay so um i don't want to get corny here all right that's all right (laughs) (laughs) so i'm muslim and i'm not a a perfect muslim let me just put that out there and that's okay too and that's okay too but one (laughs) thing that i find myself as i get older doing a lot more is what the prophet would do yes and it's just like and, and, and sorry um for those of us who don't know quote unquote the prophets can you just explain that for us real quick yes Pro- prophet muhammad that's who we yes. believe in as muslim we believe in all the prophets but we believe he's the last prophet who yes. completed the message of god thank you thank um, you just wanted you to clear that up for yeah, us thank no you problem. Go ahead. um so when I when I think about certain things, I'm just like, and, and this comes in when I'm thinking about helping others. So we yes. live in a world where sometimes it's really hard to help others because you sometimes feel like what you're putting out there is not what you're getting back. Mm. Um, but that's I've been untraining myself from thinking that way because when you do something with the hope of getting something back, you're probably not doing it for the right intentions. Mm-hmm. And so just resetting myself on why I'm doing certain things. And that goes back to your ventures, the things you're interested in. Like, yeah. well, are you doing it because you really like it? Or are you doing it because you're either receiving positive feedback or people are liking it, you know? So I'm always referring back to him as an example of he always did things for the sake of a lot. Others. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And, for, and, and to help truly help others and not mm-hmm. necessarily for personal gain. So mm-hmm. that's something I'm always striving towards and just yeah. doing for the sake of a lot. Um, I also admire my sister she is a sir, um, older, older she's two years younger okay she's an orthopedic surgery resident um perfect hey she's just so resilient she's always you should have her on the show <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to just like hard work she just puts in the work yeah and i think yeah. that so i always think about the fact that i'm not a morning person but she can get up at four three whatever time she needs to be up Mm. And she just does it. And that I know that's not easy. So 
I, I no, secretly I, I can tell you her. firsthand that's not easy. <laughs> right. I have to be more vocal about how about how I admire her from her work ethic standpoint. Yeah. Um and then the last person. Hmm. Can it be a cop out answer? Like just all hard working women because I know it's not easy. That, yeah. Go yes. ahead. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. That's my good answer. <laughs> all right, great. Lovely, lovely. I love it. I love it. So you got you got the prophet, Prophet Muhammad. Um, you got the you got the and, and, and prophet because he he does for others and he does for God. And he uses that yes. as the as the way we should live our life as people. We should live for others, be in service to others. So servant leadership, right? Yes. That's beautiful. And then um, your sister, because of her um, her work ethics, and obviously all the great women who run the world. <laughs> the great, <laughs> the yes. great women who wake up every day and show up. Wow. Yeah. That is beautiful. Thank you so much for saying that. Uh, let's see here. What can we do for you? What can we do for you? Should we play <laughs> one more game? Nah, because you ain't you ain't really only doing gonna have this. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't really doing this game right. <laughs> All right, so here's here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna close now because I don't want to take too much of your time. I did tell you it was gonna be 30 minutes uh, okay, long. No we're already 35 minutes into the uh interview or all right, so the last words or the last question I have now is do you have any word of encouragement to equip or to empower somebody that is listening right now and who might be at the verge of being fearless or taking that leap of faith? Do you have any word of encouragement for them? Yes. Sorry, I'm kidding. <laughs> I would say... Um, if you are afraid to go for something, um, think about why you're afraid. Um, always have a plan and then make that plan flexible because I, I don't believe in kind of just, I'm a very risk averse person. I mm. like to take calculated risk and I like to, you know, pros and cons lists and think about why I'm doing something and if I think I'm going to be successful. So in some regard, that's probably you know, a downside because I overthink sometimes, but at the end of it, when I think about giving others advice and learning from my own mistakes, what I would say is just think about what you want to do, you know, think about the pros and cons and then go for it. If you really mm -hmm. think that this is something that's going to be fulfilling, that you're going to get the ROI on when you actually invest the time into it, because there's no such thing as knowing the outcome of something without having done it before or without trying it. Mm. So if you're nervous, if you're scared, it's normal. Just try it. I've had a lot of failed ventures yeah. prior to what I have on my bio today. And I'm probably like, I'm not sure if any of the things that I have on my bio today will be one of those failed ventures six months from now, but that's a risk you have to be willing to take. Yeah. So I'm learning to be less risk averse and just go for it. And so I'm going to tell others out there, find your passions, like find the things that you're really excited about and yes. pursue those. Find the things that make you tap into your fullest potential. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh you my goodness. <laughs> Come on. I mean, did you hear that? Did y'all hear that? Be the best version of yourself. Don't play yourself, yo. Come no, on. No. Hey, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing. We love it. We love it. Your story is definitely uh, inspiring. It's inspiring me, man. I mean, oh, I mean, you. I'm yeah, not a good at this. Me a lot of energy. <laughs> 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 uh, all right, so we just want to thank Miss Ada, Miss Isa too. You know, we just want to thank her. Special guest. She's very special to us. Been known her for a very long time. So this is not today. It ain't today. You know what I'm saying? So, and it's not easy being her, man. I mean, I, I remember when oh, we were goodness. in college, man. She, <laughs> oh my lord, she was studious. But at the same time, she knew how to get down, you know. <laughs> so that was beautiful. That was really good. It's so I'm so glad. I'm so happy for you. And we just can't wait, man. Like to to catch up with you and to see where the next chapter. Know, 
right the next chapter and see where this life journey takes you well, and thank, thank you. you for being fearless thank you for taking that leap of faith thank you for letting most women out here know that if you have wings you can definitely fly yes uh, absolutely. definitely fly thank you so much we appreciate you for sharing your story it was so powerful and inspiring thank you for being a blessing to us to this generation thank you so so much for being a, a blessing to your family as well right you know what i mean i can yeah. only imagine what would it be like having miss Isitu <laughs> as a family member oh my goodness you know oh lord <laughs> we're so happy all right so guys this is it for us today follow us share like subscribe to all our platforms on instagram facebook apple podcast spotify and youtube uh, keep mounting up like the eagle that you are. Get out there and dominate. Thank you so much, Miss Ada. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of R&F, the podcast. We hope you have been equipped, encouraged, or empowered. Be sure to subscribe and be a blessing by telling somebody about this podcast. This week, be the salt, be the light, and remember all things are possible if you believe.